Welcome to Fusion News this week for our special year-end holiday edition. I'm Andrew Harlan, CEO of the Fusion Industry Association. As we come together in the spirit of the holidays, we embrace this season as a time of joy, love, and togetherness. A theme of this season from years gone by is the return of the light in a time of darkness. It's a season where kindness and shared moments illuminate our lives. This year, we can have growing confidence that the shining promise of a brighter tomorrow one fueled by the continuing advances in fusion energy we've seen over the past year. Fusion offers the beacon of hope in a world powered by clean, abundant energy. This week's version of Fusion News is a series of the best stories selected by our presenters from throughout the year. And it's been a remarkable year in Fusion. The progress we see lights the way towards that future. And now on to the stories. One. Fusion industry investment passes $6 billion. The first story today comes from our own Fusion Industry Association, which released its third annual Fusion Industry Report just recently. These reports are fantastic overviews of the industrial fusion landscape and are great reads if you're a keen investor who wants to keep track of the growing list of private companies or just someone who wants to learn more about the menagerie of methods for achieving fusion. One incredible highlight of the report is that the fusion industry has now received 6.2 billion US dollars in investment to date. More than 1.4 billion of which was in the last year alone. In addition to this continued funding, the number of fusion companies is also growing rapidly. This year's fusion industry survey has had 44 entrants, which is the largest ever. And in fact, last year, more private fusion companies were started up than any year previously. Finally, though private fusion is still led in large by the US, a more diverse range of companies are beginning to form and join the Fusion Industry Association. New entrants this year include OpenStar from New Zealand, Novatron from Sweden, Gauss and Proxima Fusion from Germany, and Energy Singularity from China. Overall, the report shows it is an incredibly exciting time to be in the private fusion landscape. Two, US to announce global nuclear fusion strategy at COP28. During a visit to FIA member Commonwealth Fusion Systems with Claudio Descalzi, CEO of FIA affiliate member Italian energy company Eni, who are engaged in the development of four fusion research collaborations in both Italy and the United States, including a partnership with CFS. White House Climate Envoy John Kerry stated, I will have much more to say on the United States vision for international partnerships for an inclusive fusion energy future at COP28. Decades of federal investment is transforming fusion from an experiment to an emerging climate solution. An insider knowledgeable about the upcoming announcement revealed that the fusion strategy will serve as a framework outlining the global implementation of technology with the potential for backing from international allies and that John Kerry will emphasize it as a climate solution, not merely a scientific experiment. During COP28, which is scheduled from November 30th to December 12th, this strategy is expected to mark the initiation of international collaboration on fusion. Three, NRC decision separates fusion energy regulation from nuclear fission. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States voted that nuclear fusion will be regulated in a manner similar to particle accelerators and will not be regulated like nuclear fission. This is a very important decision that gives certainty to the many teams working on fusion technology while also protecting the public. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the top governing body for nuclear power plants and other nuclear materials in the US, voted unanimously to regulate the emerging fusion industry differently from nuclear fission. Private fusion companies have raised over $5 billion to commercialize and scale fusion technology. The decision from the NRC on how the industry will be regulated is therefore a significant deal for companies in the field. This is an important decision that will give fusion developers the regulatory certainties they need to innovate while also most effectively protecting the safety, security, and health of the public. Four, a futuristic plan to make steel with nuclear fusion. Fusion Power Startup and FIA member Heliod Energy, located in Everett, Washington, and Nucor, a leading steel producer with operating facilities in the United States, Canada, and Mexico, have joined forces to develop a 500 megawatt electric fusion power plant. 
The collaboration involved a large investment of $35 million from Nucor into Helion to help in the delivery of this fusion power plant, which will be located at one of the Nucor North American steel manufacturing sites, which is among the largest electricity consumers within each state they are located. This collaborative effort aims to accelerate the future of clean energy in the industrial manufacturing sector. Helion Energy, renowned for its innovation in fusion technology, has already achieved impressive milestones, including the creation of six working fusion prototypes and becoming the world's first private fusion company to achieve 100 million degree plasma temperatures. Currently, the company is in process of constructing its seventh prototype, Polaris, which is expected to demonstrate electricity production from fusion in 2024. Nucor, which calls itself one of the world's cleanest steel manufacturers, has shown their commitment to reducing its carbon footprint. And this fusion energy agreement would be a massive step towards their goal of achieving clean energy for steelmaking. The fusion power plant will provide Nucor's steelmaking facility with zero carbon electricity. And it's worth noting that this collaboration is the first of its kind at such a scale and is set to pave the way for decarbonization within industrial manufacturing. Helion CEO David Kirtley expressed his enthusiasm for the partnership, stating, We are proud to have investment from Nucor and to have the opportunity to work together on this project. Their commitment providing their customers with the lowest embodied carbon steel and steel products available makes them a great fit for deploying 500 megawatts of fusion power. The collaboration between Helion Energy and Nucor signifies a pivotal moment in the fusion industry and the broader effort to transition to clean energy and industrial manufacturing and would provide a blueprint for fusion companies to sign similar deals with power customers in the future. Five, joint statement between DOE and the UK Department for Energy Security and Net Zero concerning a strategic partnership to accelerate fusion. This week, the US Department of Energy and the UK Department for Energy Security and Net Zero announced a partnership focused on coordinating the two nations' efforts for demonstrating and commercializing fusion energy. The agreement will advance both the Biden administration's decadal vision for fusion and the UK's fusion strategy, mainly through the efforts of the DOE's Fusion Energy Science Program and the UK Atomic Energy Authority. A joint coordinating committee will be announced soon and will likely meet for the first time early next year. This follows recent news of both the UK and the US establishing fusion regulatory frameworks. Italy's ENI and CFS speed up plans for fusion energy. A new agreement between Italian energy company ENI and Fusion Industry Association member Commonwealth Fusion Systems, known as CFS, was widely reported on this week. CFS is a US-based company working in close collaboration with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to develop the first fusion pilot plant based on magnetic confinement fusion in a tokamak. Despite the exciting results in recent years from JET, East, K-Star and other tokamak facilities, no one has yet managed to achieve break-even, or in other words, we've not yet been able to get more energy out from fusion reactions than the energy delivered to make and heat the plasma in the first place. CFS are designing and building a tokamak called Spark, which they intend to start operating in 2025. Spark is designed to be the first tokamak to achieve break-even and will be followed in the early 2030s by Arc, which is intended to be able to deliver electricity to the grid. The partnership with ENI is intended to speed up the industrialization of fusion, to prepare to make the transition from a single proof of concept fusion plant to a global technology. NE CEO Claudio Descalzi said, We will see the first CFS power plant based on magnetic confinement fusion at the beginning of the next decade, with then almost two decades ahead to deploy the technology and achieve the energy transition goals by 2050. Having this technology at the industrial level, providing large quantities of zero carbon energy produced in a safe, clean and virtually inexhaustible way will mean that we will contribute substantially to the energy transition challenge. This is why we are facing a potentially momentous technological breakthrough. US scientists repeat fusion power breakthrough from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. You probably remember that in December of last year, their inertial confinement laser fusion technology in the National Ignition Facility managed to produce net energy gain for the first time ever. The most recent news is that they've managed to reproduce the result with an even higher energy output than in December. The technique that they use involves firing powerful lasers at a fuel pellet, which then creates the conditions necessary for fusion to occur. Although the energy gained currently would only be enough to boil about 10 kettles of water, this ability to not only repeat, but improve results within less than a year, demonstrates that progress is being made at pace and will likely continue to do so. 
There is, however, a long way to go until commercialization is achieved with this technology, as currently fusion reactions can only be created once a day before lasers then need to be cooled and the full target replaced. Government announces up to £650 million for UK alternatives to Euratom R and T. This story is a big one for the future of fusion in Europe and the United Kingdom, and it stems from negotiations that took place earlier this month of the UK's participation in EU science projects such as the Horizon program. With these talks, which took place earlier this month, more than three years after the UK's exit from the EU, the UK made the decision to leave the Euratom research and training program. This program coordinates the majority of fusion research in Europe through projects such as Eurofusion and the ITER project. Though initially this sounds like a sad story for the UK's contribution to fusion, it's really more of a pivot in the country's strategy. Because with leaving Euratom, the UK announced a plan to contribute up to £650 million in fusion research and development by 2027, in addition to the £126 million left over from a funding announcement back in November. Now, if released, this budget would be fantastic for the development of fusion research in the UK, and according to the government, this budget would likely focus on developing a fusion workforce, further work on designing the UK's step tokamak, and research into the fusion fuel cycle and tritium handling, one of the biggest open research questions. Now, apparently, continuing in international collaborations will also be a priority with this new fusion program, despite leaving Euratom. However, whether the UK actually continues to be an international collaborative force in fusion remains to be seen. This new funding, coupled with the imminent shutdown of JET and leaving Euratom, the UK's future role in the international development for fusion is certainly exciting, but certainly uncertain. And so, in this season of light, let us honor the tireless work of the scientists, engineers, and leaders who are working to achieve the dream of limitless fusion energy. As we enjoy the warmth of this holiday season, let's carry the spirit of progress and innovation with us. Let's be inspired by the remarkable advances in fusion and apply that same spirit of collaboration and determination to all we do in the new year. Happy holidays to you all, wherever you are and however you celebrate. 